Here we are with Gigabyte's Ors Master Z890 motherboard. I know there's not a lot of fans out there of Intel right now. Even when I'm streaming, I can't find anyone who has a new build of Intel's 15th gen. Honestly, I don't blame you, but here we are. We're going to test out the Z890 to see exactly how well it performs. Let's see what Gigabyte offers for their motherboard because they always do make some excellent products here. Hopefully you were there for the stream. If you weren't, that's okay, because you could get a in-depth look of the Gigabyte Ors Master. So they pack it pretty nicely here, right there. And we'll take it right out the box because we wanna see what is in here. Now Gigabyte's pretty straightforward when it comes to their motherboards here and they don't really pack too much extras in here. They do give you all the necessary requirements in order for you to install this motherboard. We're gonna take this out its ESD bag and lay it right across. But before we do so, I'll show you exactly what Gigabyte does offer. Now when you open this up here, you're gonna see that they offer the quick connect antennas. They also uh, give you the front panel port, which is nice, some SATA cables, and they even have this really cool DRAM fan. It's like a mini fan, dissipate the heat a lot better for you. It's an optional hookup, but it's nice to have if you wanna keep your RAM nice and cool. And they have two thermal sensors in here. And surprisingly, they don't have any RGB extensions. Usually they all, oh yeah, they do. It's somewhere in here. Yep. More thermal sensors. And Gigabyte does offer some stickers finally. Finally you get some Gigabyte stickers. It's nice to see it in act. Let's go straight to the motherboard and take a deeper look. We're gonna close this up first and then pull it out its ESD bag. Ooh, woo. Good thing the cardboard was there. <laughs> that would have been bad. Man, how many times have you fumbled the uh, PC parts? But anyway, let's take a look at this board here. The great thing about Gigabyte's Aorus Master Z890, it features a great power phase system. 18 plus one plus two design. Now it has 18 V-Core phases, one VCCGT phase, has up to two VCCGA phases. It's inside of here where it actually keeps it nice and passively cooled which it sits directly on top of it. Would be hard to see unless you put it. It also gives you a full length PCI Express slot. So there's nothing in the way to install it. It does have its quick release right here. So for those who are afraid of it. And the nice thing about Gigabyte's Z890 design here, specifically in the Ors Master, it has like a rubber coating if you look closely to the PCI Express side. So it prevents any of the gold fingers from getting damaged on the PCI Express bus, which I know some are afraid of. Gigabyte does brag about their 10 times loading capacity when it comes to PCI Express 5 on their X16 bus because it features a zinc alloy coating. It does have a nice large heatsink over PCI Express 5 and it is also a quick release. You can just quickly just lift it right here. You just pull this latch, you pull it out at an angle and that easy you can install it. It does come with direct thermal pads as well with it. So you simply just sit it back and you're just gonna latch it right back on and you just line up, line it up just like that. It also has four DRAM slots. Specifically, the nice thing is Gigabyte does offer you, especially for those who are new builders, you can easily tell where you have to insert your main DDR5 RAM, which is going to be right here to the closest to the front facing of the motherboard where it has a metal shrouding. This metal shrouding is to ensure stability on the RAM so that way it doesn't wobble or shake. It does feature D5's Bionic Corsa, which can really support the Infinity Cache for Intel's version of it at least, which is a DDR5 of 6,000 megahertz. Now you can set it up to 6,400 megahertz or even up to 6,600 megahertz, but it starts, you have to start watching more of the timing as soon as you go further up to the 7,000 megahertz side. Of course it has X7P 3.0. It does use a very friendly UI, which makes it nice and simple to use. 
they brag about using it up to 5,000 uses without any type of issue. There's even coding when it comes to the ATX power port. There's coding when it comes to the CPU. There is even coding on the ATX port right here. There's a metal shrouding also when it comes to your CPU ports. So they really ensure stability when it comes to the motherboard. So you don't have to worry about any type of shaking or breaking it. Once going back to the M2, it does feature up to five M2 slots. So we have the one here. Now this one is easily accessible. You just pull that up and it also is a quick release. So you don't need screws with that as well. It does feature up to four PCI Express slots here, but just to forewarn you, it doesn't matter if you use up Gem 5 or Gem 4, especially for those who are looking for more graphical performance, do not use the M2 underscore three side right here because it will split the power between your PCI Express X10 to the X4 and it will make it to X8, X8, which is no good. So definitely don't do that. So it's easy enough to put it back on. You can just line it up to these, these quick latches here. Just set it up vertically. Just make sure it sits upright. Won't be this easy when it's out the case. There we go. Of course, just look for it being flush. That's the easiest way to find out. Of course, you got your metal shrouds down here for your other PCI Express if you do decide to use those bus right here on the bottom. And the best part is it does come fully featured with a bunch of different ports that you can take advantage on this motherboard. Specifically, this is a Intel board. So it is LGA 1851, which is the newer generation of Intel. I know some of you may not like it. Some prefer even the 14th gen and under because at least it has a bit more power. But again, we'll test out this board, see what we can really pull out of it. It does feature Raptor Lake's integrated loading system. So it has that nice pressurized feeling when you put it in there. It's a very thick release where you lift it up and you can just feel the tension when you can, when you lock it into place. So you don't have to, it puts less pressure on you when you do install a processor inside of this board. It does have a nice easy debug mode on here. When you look up here on the top of the board, it does give you the Q code. It does have a power button and even a reset switch on the top, right under the Q code. Let's go into depth and take a look at the different ports that they do offer you with Gigabyte's Master Ors Z890 here. Now it does give you the typical CPU uh, connection right here up on the top eight extra fan that sits just slightly next to it. That's a little tough spot, but it's great for those who use a AIO design. You even have up to four different fan options where the CPU side is. Typically you put the CPU fan, you got your CPU fan, you got your CPU option. You do have a AIO pump area, your system fan if you choose to hook up, which is the extra DRAM, which I was talk talking to you about. You can sit it right here, that little fan and it will blow or dissipate the heat away from the RAM to help keep it nice and cool. It also has a RGB headers right here next to it, right on top of the Q code, and you have your typical ATX port, which we talked about in USB-C. Under it, it has USB 3, it has two different ports for that. As you go travel a little bit further down the board and you take a look onto the side of the board here, you can take a look at four SATA ports and a HDMI port as well, if you choose to use integrated graphics. It also has two extra fans here on the bottom, USB 3.0 and two temperature sensing plugs. There's also a temperature sens sensing header right up here. It's kind of hidden, the newer style of the front panel for the chassis of your tower or your PC case, which luckily they give you a connector to make it a little bit easier for you. And you have three different fans. Right next to it is USB 2.0, a sensor uh, SPI. You even have a jumper and you do have more ARGB. So you have five different ARGB headers on this motherboard. You have temperature sensing everywhere depending where you wanna put it. And then next to it, you have your audio. And speaking of audio, it uses ESS's Sabre, which is a DAC E591B. It also has ALC 1220. Thing is, it also will fit those who are audiophiles. Speaking of audiophiles here, you take a look at the back. It does feature SPDIF, if that is what you're looking for. It does use USB version 3.1 and USB 3.2 Gen 2. Two Thunderbolt ports, which are Thunderbolt 4, not Thunderbolt 5, which was my mistake in the stream. Gives you BIOS reset and BIOS flashback as well. A clear CMOS button instead of taking out the battery, which can be pretty annoying. 
you have your quick connect and it does give you a 10 gigabit port for those who are looking for faster internet it does feature bluetooth 5.4 and it does give you wi-fi 7 a mic in a line out this board is simply quite a delight to have and it will be quite interesting to go see how the intel route will go for those who love overclocking this is a great motherboard for you and for those who are gamers and enthusiasts this is a great board for you it's a little bit on the high end when it comes for the gamer side the bounds are limitless when it comes to the motherboard except it's from intel <laughs> Gigabyte does offer some AI overclocking if you choose so, and I know that word's been well overused, but it does have practically like an auto-tuning tool if you want to go that route. What are your thoughts about Gigabyte's Orange Master? Let me know in the comments down below. Is it something that you're interested in building with? And let me know if you would even try Intel, because I am just curious. I haven't found anyone out there just quite yet. Thanks again so much for watching.